This is the bungee jump problem. I'm calling it the bungee jump problem. So let me show you this in real life and then we're gonna work out the, the physics of it. So here I have a, here I have a, uh, a spring with a mass connected to it and it's hanging down here. And I've already measured the spring constant, it's 15.5. Uh, I've already measured, this is a 200 gram mass. Uh, the length of the spring as it's not stretched is about 0.4. I, I re-measured it, I got 0.4. Uh, so let me just scrub through this and show you what happens. So I'm gonna lift it up to here. So the spring is completely unstretched, I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna do it in slow motion. Slow motion. And so it's gonna fall and then it's gonna go down to some lowest point right down there and it's gonna bounce back up. But we wanna find what that lowest point is. Uh, and this is like a bungee jump, right? So if I had a bungee jumper, I would wanna know how high they're gonna fall uh, before the bungee stops them. And then that could be like the water or something cool down there, but I can make sure that they don't hit that. Uh, and then when they bounce up and then come unattached and get caught, I actually caught that, look at that, I caught that because that's, I was just thinking ahead. Okay, but let's calculate this minimum point based on those values and see if we can uh, get what, what we see. Okay, so here's the situation. I have a mass up here and it's gonna fall down and I wanna find this height that it falls H. Uh, so in this case, since we're dealing with a change in position and we're dealing with springs, which are difficult to deal with because they don't have constant forces, I pretty much have to use the work energy theorem. So uh, work energy. You have to write it out. So this says the work done on a system is the change in energy of the system. And that seems so simple as to be too simple to be useful, but in fact, it is useful. But I need to first describe or choose my system. So let's pick a system that has the mass plus the earth plus the spring. If that's the case, then what does work on my system? What adds energy to my system? And the answer is nothing, right? There's obviously a spring force, but it's part of my system. There's obviously a gravitational force, but it's part of my system. So in this case, the work is equal to zero. Now, the system also tells me what kind of energies I have. If I have a mass that can move, then I can have a change in kinetic energy. If I have the mass plus the earth interacting, then I can have a change in gravitational potential energy. And if I have a spring that can get stretched, I have a change in spring potential energy. So here we have the kinetic energy. This is capital K, that's lowercase k, that's the spring constant, so don't worry about that. Uh, the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The gravitational potential energy is mgy, and the spring potential energy is one half ks squared. So mass, velocity squared, that's fine. Mass, gravitational field, and the y position, that's fine. And then this is one half spring constant. S is the amount, it's either stretched or, or compressed, okay? And so that is a little bit difficult here because if you look here, this spring is gonna come down right there. So this mass is gonna fall, and the only thing that's gonna act on it is gravity until it gets to that point. After this, it's gonna get stretched, so this is some distance s right there. So that's that s, how much it's stretched, okay? So here you can see it's gonna fall a distance h, this is l, the unstretched length, and then that's s, okay? So that does make it a little bit more difficult and fun. Okay, let's start looking at these terms. First, if I start at position one and I go to position two, then what's my change in kinetic energy? Well, I'm gonna take the mass and let go. So it starts from rest. So the initial kinetic energy is zero. But at the bottom point you saw it was moving down, then moving back up, it had to stop. So the velocity down here is zero. So this is gonna be equal to uh, K2 minus K1 plus UG2 minus UG1 plus US2 minus US1. So zero, zero. What about the spring, the gravitational potential energy? So I have a Y in here. I have to pick where is my Y equal to zero. I can pick, okay? There is no wrong, right answer and there's no wrong answer. Let's just pick Y equals zero up here. 
Um, because I can't pick down here. I don't really know what that final position is. I could pick somewhere in the middle, but I think it just makes sense to pick y is equal to zero up here. So if that's the case, my initial gravitational potential is mg times zero, so that's zero. My final is gonna be negative mgh. So let's go ahead and write down what we have. We have zero equals the change in kinetic is zero, plus the final gravitational minus m. G H. I'm calling H a positive quantity below that. So very, that's why I put the minus sign there. It's going to have a negative Y value. Okay, now what about the spring potential? So I have the final spring potential is going to be plus one half K S squared. The initial, it's not stretched or compressed at all up here. It's just hanging. So that's zero. So this is my equation. I want to solve for H, but S depends on H too. So in fact, I can see here if this is the distance h and this is the distance l, then s is going to be equal to uh, l. I mean, sorry, it's not. s is going to be h minus l. So if I put that in here, I get negative m g h plus one half k h minus l quantity squared equals zero. And this is the equation that I want to solve. So let's solve that equation for H because I know M, I know G, I know K, I know L. I know everything in there but H. Okay, so let's write that equation. Zero equals negative M G H plus one half K H minus L squared. So the first thing I can do is to square out this uh, term. Zero equals negative mgh plus one half k and then I get h squared, right, h times h and then I can get h times negative l, it's going to be negative lh but then I can get negative l times h so I get minus 2lh and then I get negative l times negative l so plus l. Now I want to gather all my terms together, I want to get all the h's together so let's say zero equals uh, I have one half k times h squared, so it's one half k h squared. Now, what about my h term? So let's say plus h. I have a negative mg, and then if I multiply this over here, I have an h term. So I have a one half k times negative two l, so I get negative k l times h. And then finally, I have a constant term. I have this times that, so I get plus one half k l squared. Oh, that's a squared. Yeah. L times L. I wrote L. That's weird. Okay. So you'll see here I have an H term, H squared term, an H, and a constant all equals zero. This looks like the form zero equals AX squared plus BX plus C, but instead of X's I have H, and so here my A is going to be equal to one half k. My b is this term. b is negative mg minus kl. And my c is one half k l squared. And how do you solve an equation like this? Quadratic equation. So I'm not using x. I'm going to use h. So h is going to, I get two terms. I'm going to take the positive one. I'll tell you why later. b squared plus the square root, I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> that's not the quadratic equation. H equals negative B, plus or minus, but I'm going with the plus, square root of B squared minus 4AC, all of that over 2A. So I, I'm going to go ahead and put numbers in for these, right? So remember, K is 15.5, uh, M is 0.2, L is 0 0.4, and then I can put them in over here. I wouldn't normally do it this way, but it, it works better on the, on, the, on the paper here. So let's do 15.5 uh, divided by 2. That's 7.75. And then I get negative M times G minus K times L. And I get negative... 8.16 and then this last one I have 0.5 times 15.5 times 0.4 squared 
1.24. So now I can do this thing. Let's just put in my numbers. So I get negative B, which is, that's B. So I get plus 8.16 plus the square root of B squared, 8.16 squared, minus 4 times 7.75 times 1.24, all of that over 2 times A, which is 7.75. Okay, so let's do this in the calculator. Clear. Okay, I'm not good with calculators. Parentheses. I need to put a parentheses because I'm going to divide all by that. 8.16 plus square root 8.16 squared minus 4 times 7.75 times 1.24. Close parentheses for the square root. Close parentheses for the top. Divided by parentheses 2 times 7.75. Close parentheses equals 0.86 meters. And that's the answer. Okay. So let's just check that answer. Uh, you do get a second answer, but it doesn't work. You get an answer like 0.1, also if you use the minus sign right here, okay? But that, that makes an assumption that as it moves back up, it's like, where is this, the velocity zero, okay? And that would be if the spring pulled on it going back up, which it doesn't. Once it goes back up past this thing, there's no more spring acting on it. So it's not a completely legitimate calculation. Uh, but the, the other one is. So let's look at the video and see if that is at least, at least close. Okay. Okay, so this is a meter stick. Uh, I, have, I have the zero up here. Do I have the zero up here? Let's see. Let's see, can I zoom in? Uh, let's make this bigger. Okay. Um, yeah, the zero is down at the bottom. Okay, so if you look at the bot lowest point, that's right about 0.12 meters. So if you take 100 minus 0.12, you get 0.88. I calculated 0.66. So, I mean, it's pretty close, um, but I still catch it. So it's all cool in the end. So that's the bungee jumping problem. Hope that helps.